The People's Democratic Party has shown that it will not accept defeat just yet, as it has asked the Supreme Court to review its judgment, which upheld the victory of President Muhammad Buhari in the 2019 presidential election and dismissed the appeal of the PDP candidate Atiku Abubakar. The PDP National Publicity Secretary, Kola Olubudio, who stated this, also called on the Supreme Court to review its judgment on the governorship elections in four states, namely Oshu, Kanu, Kaduna, and Katsina State. Still with me in the studio is Dami Adebayo. Thank you very much. And still joining us via telephone in a bit is legal practitioner Liboros Oshoma. But before I get to ask them the questions, let's uh, see that a bit of that press conference. The APC federal government is leading all forms of battles against the rule of law and constitutionalism. The PDP holds that our sacrifices for the sustenance of democracy, as demonstrated in our, comp in our patriotic comportment towards the verdicts of the court on the presidential election, as well as Oshun, Kanu, Katsina, and Kaduna Governorship Election Tribunal subsists. Moreover, there is a consensus among the majority of Nigerians and even the international community that there was obvious miscarriage of justice by the Supreme Court panel on the Imo State Governorship Election, for which the PDP accordingly reverted to the Supreme Court, asking it to correct the manifest mistakes and errors in the judgment, which are already in the public domain. However, the PDP, the PDP finds it ludicrous, ridiculous, and insulting to the sensibilities and respect of the Supreme Court justices for the APC to hurriedly and malevolently head to the Supreme Court to attempt to untwist the Lord Justices to effect a forceful reversal of the valid, flawless, and faultless judgments on Baeza and Zamfara State governorship elections. Consequently, the National Working Committee of our great party, the People's Democratic Party, after comprehensive consultations, states that our party has no choice left, given the manner with which the APC has conducted itself, that will ask for a review of the judgment of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, where the issue of certificate forgery and or presentation of false information in the aid of qualifications was clearly established against the APC and, his, and, her presidential, and her presidential candidate. The same applies to the judgment on the Katsina governorship election petition, where lawyers also established similar issue of certificate forgery. The PDP equally has no choice than to ask the Supreme Court to review the Kanu, Kaduna, and Katsina election judgments because of manifest violence and substantial non-compliance to our electoral law. The PDP also asked the Supreme Court to review its judgment on the Oshun governorship election in view of manifest, complete, and total disregard to our electoral rules in the conduct of the election. Our party, the People's Democratic Party, will not fold its hands and watch enemies of our hard-earned democracy who contributed nothing to its birth to continue to appropriate our collective sovereignty for their selfish political gain while destroying our institution and holding our people to ransom. A lot of strong words uh, <laughs> used by the PDP there. Let's, let's, uh, let's start with the barrister on the phone. Um, Liberis, are you still with us? Okay, so I was going to speak right, with yeah. uh, him on, you know, the Supreme Court judgments and all of that. This calling for review is almost like the predicted floodgate has been opened, yeah. asking it to review itself. What kind of precedents are we setting? Um, I think first and foremost is, you know, the PDP can't eat its cake and have it. I, I heard him speaking about referring to the flawless judgments in Bayos and Zamfara and then going on on the flawed elections of Washun, Kaduna, Katsina. And again, it's, you know, it's either flawed and it's completely flawed that, look, everything is wrong or it's, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day. But again, this, um, I think the fundamental issue here for me has been INEC as well. So we're put in a situation where the judiciary is now the arbiter of elections because INEC has failed to cover all its bases properly as well. So things like the technicalities, the certificates, these are things that INEC should have sorted out a long time ago. So the fact that it's going all the way to the Supreme Court, it's what leads to forces like this. And the Supreme Court is what's getting itself in very muddy waters, settling cases on 
technicalities that are very hard to convince a lot of people, especially people that are not familiar with the law. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is the vote count. This is the results, you know. So technical terms like cancelled elections, margin of error, cancelled votes, and, you know, the winning margin as well, it's only going to confuse a lot more people. And again, I think the court has starting to lose credibility, the fact that it has to intervene in a lot of these issues from time to time. Okay, let, let's, uh, I'm told we have Boris on the line now. Um, a quick question for you. Um, the accusation by the PDP of uh, the Supreme Court justices, some sort of complicity with the ruling of progressive to, in a way, subvert their victory uh, from the way that um, press conference went. What's your reaction to that first, before we talk about the presidential uh, certificate uh, forgery? No, which um, which of the of the press conference? The one. But the PDP. I didn't the, get your question. Okay, the PDP held a press conference. We just played a clip uh, yeah. right now of yeah. them no, saying. No, no, I have it. I have, I, I, yeah. Okay, so my question is: They're accusing the justices of being complicit in trying to subvert their victory. What's your reaction yeah. to that? Is it possible for the justices to be compromised? Yeah, you see, I, I don't like this attitude of um, once judgment does not go in anybody's favor, and then they begin to accuse the uh, justices of the Supreme Court. The court had delivered judgment. Do uh, you remember, like the Supreme Court had consistently said, they are they are not infallible. They are humans, and and so, but they are the final court. And so, let's stop this attitude of always accusing judges when a judgment does not go in your favor. Take the fiction. Some, sometimes it goes in their favor. Sometimes it doesn't go in their favor. And, and so let them take this in good faith and accept it the way it has uh, it, 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 it's, it's been. This idea of, you know, wanting to review, it will open a floodgate of all other, um, uh, what do you call it, very soon, like I did say this morning on another platform, you now begin to ask for a review of Obas and George's uh, judgment, ask for a review of Tinubu's uh, election petition judgment. Well, isn't it Let's the not make Court, a mockery of our is, if, if I may interject, isn't it the same Supreme Court that has accepted to review the case of Emo State? So if they have accepted one, don't you think there is the likelihood that they will also accept um, if there are tangible reasons for a review? Look, look let, let me tell you. You remember in Andy Obas's case, in Anambra, Andy Uba did approach the Supreme Court to review his judgment and that he was not, another was given against him, that he was not part of the process without giving a fair hearing. If the Supreme Court had been said, uh, when the matter was filed, if the Supreme Court could have thrown the matter away at filing stage, the matter was filed and the court decided to hear it. And upon hearing the matter, the court said, that it lacks merit, and there was no way they were going to look into it. But the fact that a suit is given a suit number does not mean that the matter, you know, automatically would see the light of the day. So for the fact that the Supreme Court had accepted to, to hear the application does not mean, in, in, in the actual sense, that that application has merit. So... Okay, I'll ask you one more, and then I'll come back to my guest in the studio. The presidential, um, the alleged certificate forgery that was dismissed by the Supreme Court, the PDP is, uh, is saying that they have a case uh, that they were able to prove um, at the court. So do they have a case, really? Because they've been on this over and over again. What's your take? Like we say in court, there should be an end to litigation. The judgment had been delivered in the matter. And so if the judgment had been delivered in the matter, the matter had been laid to rest. And the court becomes for two officials. And so now coming again to say a matter that had been, you want to relitigate a matter that had been litigated upon. All of this, that's why for me, yes, agreed, in, in the case of um, Imo, you would say that the, the, the uh, what do you call the PDP would have a solid ground to ask for a review. But what the APC have done now is to throw a lot of reviews in the mix to make it look as if, okay, now let's open a myriad of reviews. And then PDP had compounded the issue 
by asking for all sorts of reviews. And that would have made them, that have made them lose focus of the issues. And so the moment you lose focus of the issues, the court might like me at the end of the day, just throw away all the applications, and even sanction the senior lawyers that brought these applications. And so it might turn away the baby with the bad water. So what they should have done would have been to focus strictly on the emo issue that they were asking for review and not going to open uh, all the matters of presidential election or show election, Kano election, Kaduna election. For me, it's, uh, it's, it's laughing. laughing. Thank you very much uh, for your contributions. My pleasure. All right. Your, um, I want to I ask you something specific. Shoot. The Minister of Labor and Employment says that um, Festus, okay, um, I think Labor and Employment, that's his uh, ministry, he says, called on the Supreme Court to recommend lawyers engaging in what he described as the mockery of the judicial system for discipline. He said until that is done, the sanctity of the apex court would be in a jeopardy. He's referring to all these people that are asking the Supreme yeah. Court to refer, review. I would have asked that to Laboris, yeah. but there's no time. What's your take on I that? Think, I think it's funny that a member of the ruling party and a minister in the government is talking about the sanctity of a court when they kept quiet when a Supreme Court justice was unconstitutionally removed as well. So again, like I've said, let's, let's treat these things with the merits in which they come from as well. Um, I mean, is it a valid criticism? Maybe. Should he be saying it? I don't think so as well and the the issue here is politicians seeking to win by the courts and not by the ballot box as well um i mean there's two elections coming up two gubernatorial elections coming up there's you know edo and there's ondo as well the pdp's house is in disarray for quite a few and they're hoping on defections and they're hoping that there's a split in the ruling party in edo as well so we're probably going to come back here to you know people going to the supreme court and asking for review of cases as well when strong campaigns just haven't been run as well Forgetting the fact that Oshun was lost barely by a whisker, if there's a little bit more coordination as well, I don't think there's any cause that the Minibs uphold, you know, a victory, an overwhelming victory for the PDP in Oshun State as well. So there's a, um, there's a lack of focus from both political parties right now. It benefits the APC, obviously, but if the PDP cannot see that this is the game that is happening, then I'm not sure they're being a very strong or effective opposition party. I think it's fair to mention the fact that the APC has reacted to this um, press uh, briefing by the PDP, saying basically telling them to go take a seat, that they have too many things to focus on mm -hmm. uh, than to listen to the PDP uh, saying things. These things that they're focusing on and these uh, litigation, do you think there is a meeting point? Oof. So are, are you saying that there's a compromise point for both parties? Yes. I think they go on to contest elections and then hopefully one person wins as well. Um, because the, the issue for me isn't, um, I mean, obviously, I'm not pleased that the Supreme Court has to, you know, litigate these decisions. And sometimes the technicalities in which they're resolved have left a lot of people scratching their heads and being confused about, you know, how did this decision come about as well? But the fact that it's getting to them is the issue. It's the... Is it you know. that they don't care really about all of these litigation because they're already in power or they're just uh, saying it because they really believe that the PDP has no case? I, I truly believe that the standard of elections have fallen as well. I do not, I mean, okay, you know, let's throw it back, you know, the 15 elections and the elections preceding it as well. Um, there were stable elections. You rarely saw, you know, especially for the gubernatorials and the presidential as well, but mainly the gubernatorials, which are usually the court-elected cases as well. You didn't see them being returned. You didn't see the court saying, oh, no, this is actually the person that won. And that's what happens when elections are properly run, you know, when there's no manipulation, where there is, you know, when cancelled vote margins aren't looking suspicious as well. So when they are run properly, we have this, you know, issue where we have to go to the courts and then we have judgments that look very funny but if we held the elections properly in the first instance then we wouldn't be here all right i guess that's where we might need to drop it for now thank you very much for sharing pleasure. your thoughts with us <laughs> all right we will take a short break for a plus report and when we return i will give my take don't go away
The counsel to the detained leader of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, Ibrahim El Zazaki, has commended the Kaduna High Court for insisting that Mr. El Zazaki and his wife Zina be allowed to see their doctor. The counsel, Masha Abubaka, spoke to newsmen in Kaduna shortly after the court adjourned the hearing to April 23rd, summoning the Comptroller of the Nigeria Correctional Service Facility in Kaduna State and frowning at attempt to deprive the accused access to see their personal doctors. In short, while we are there inside the courtroom, before my lord, the wife of Malam Zazaki was vomiting blood from her mouth. That is to tell you the kind of dire, urgent medical intervention that they require. Till now, she still has fractured wounds on her head. Till this moment, she still has bullet pellets lodged in certain parts of her body. And right in the courtroom, she was still vomiting blood before my lord. And my lord said, this cannot be allowed to happen. It is only someone who is fit, medically fit, and medically fit that can take a plea or a trial that having failed to comply with the orders of court, mandating the prison authorities to allow the defendant in that case access to their doctors. Now we cannot have a trial. Court ordered that the physician, his personal physician should see him. There are some issues that, that arose about uh, the issue of seeing him. But the controller of prison, uh, correctional center has been summoned. We have been able to manage and sort out all the gray areas. And then now the court has reiterated this order and had allowed, given the order that his personal physicians should, should be allowed access to him, he should be given all the necessary assistance. If he wants to go for scan in any of the hospitals, the, the, the correctional center should provide security for him to be taken anywhere he wants to. And then the court had adjourned the matter to the 23rd of April, so that all these issues should be seen to have been done before trial commences in earnest. President Mohammed Buhari is constitutionally disqualified from recontesting as the position has opening for only two terms. We also have his promise that there will be no attempt to rig the law in his favor for a third term. So there is a definite opening in Asurok come 2023. And whether we like it or not, the conversation will only grow momentum in the coming days and months. Who will be Nigeria's next president? Unfortunately, the issues topping this debate has little to do with national interest, but is more focused on personalities and shenanigans that is of very little relevance to the real advancement of this country. Can we evolve conversations on the subject to focus on the real issues of poverty, education and infrastructural developments, about strategies, plans, leadership, antecedents and competences? Will the conversation about restructuring be another gimmick to hugwing citizens into making decisions that are questionable? I can go on and on, but suffice it to say, my take tonight is a call for us to have issues-based debates and conversations as we inch towards the next big elections. Thank you for your time, as always. If you enjoyed the conversation tonight, please join us again same time. Until next time, be well.